In this episode of Northern Jersey Railroad, I'll be showing you how I made a split rail fence in end scale. And I started with these mini wooden sticks that I found. I think it was in Walmart. Now they're obviously not to scale. They're about two millimeters thick and about six and a half centimeters long. So that would be about a, about a foot uh, thick. So that would be too much for a fence. So I'm going to start off by cutting them down to length. I'm going to start off by making the posts. And they're going to be about four foot high in end scale. So that's about eight millimeters uh, that I'm measuring it to. I've made a mark on the uh, piece of wood. And I'm just going to uh, use my uh, craft knife and cut through it. As I said, they're too thick uh, for end scale. So what I'm doing here is I'm splitting the log. I'm actually using the craft knife to uh, just slice the very edge of the uh, uh, piece of wood. And then I'm going to flip it around and do it on the other side. And that way, they split right in half. But of course, they're really still too thick. Of course, they'd be about six inches in uh, diameter in uh, real life. So I'm going to split them again and get it a little bit closer to uh, what an appropriate post would be in end scale, or about three to four uh, inches thick. And as you can see, uh, you can do it to uh, both sections, and you end up getting four posts out of uh, one section of wood. I'm going to do the same thing now for the rails. Each section is about eight foot long, so I'm doing about 16 millimeters and cutting it to uh, length and then just as I did before I'm going to uh, split the rails. With my pieces uh, ready for assembly I'm taking the first section of fence that I had made previously and I'm just lining it up now so that the uh, rails are at the same height uh, as they are in the uh, first section that way it's not all wonky uh, when it's all uh, set up so with the um, first section there I'm now just teasing it around just to try and get it and push up the rails right up against the post because what I'll end up doing is putting just a drop of PVA glue right on top. But these things, they have a mind of their own, and they like to jump around a little bit. I probably should have left it alone when it was uh, first there. They're a little fiddly, but uh, you end up getting it after a while, just getting it set up. Uh, it's almost like they're magnetized, <laughs> and they want to uh, jump around and uh, touch one another. So with the rail set up, I moved that original section out of the way, and now I'm going to uh, apply the glue. Now I use the uh, precision glue applicator that I have. Oh, you can't uh, <laughs> uh, discount uh, the benefit of having one of these uh, precision applicators. I mean, they put the glue exactly where you need uh, to have a drop, and uh, it's <laughs> I couldn't do uh, most of my builds without them. So with the, uh, just put the one drop there on each rail and just let it set for a minute or so till it starts to set up. I then take the next post and I put that into place and basically I do the exact same thing again. Get all fiddly with it, trying to move it into uh, the right spot. And then uh, once I'm uh, happy with where it is, I'll apply the glue once more. If anyone's interested in uh, these particular uh, applicators, these precision applicators, I'll put a link down below uh, 
so you can uh, check them out on Amazon. And there you go. You got one section of fence done. Now I'm going to do it three more times. So all you do is measure, cut the post to length, split them into quarters, do the same thing again for the rails, cut them to length, split them in half, and then split in half again, and then set them into place for gluing. And put the post then at the end, and then wash, rinse, repeat. However, when I was applying the glue, I noticed that it wasn't sinking into the joint. So what I did was just like I, we do with the uh, ballasting and other applications, I started using uh, rubbing alcohol. And the isopropyl alcohol uh, just helped the glue sink right in. So I'd actually put a little bit on beforehand, apply the glue, and then I'd put a little bit on at the end as well. And the glue would then uh, go right into uh, the joint and held really well. After completing my two sections of fence, I decided I needed a gate in between them. There was just enough space to have a, an appropriate size gate. So it's the same process as uh, what we just did with the fencing. I split the pieces in half and half again. What I did though is I used a cross brace uh, piece that went diagonally across the uh, fence to keep the gate from sagging, of course. I actually made two gates and had the uh, pieces going in opposite directions, but it turns out I only uh, used one on the layout. And once they've dried, they're really pretty sturdy. I was actually surprised. Uh, if you let them sit there, you know, dry overnight, you know, give it a good couple of hours to dry, really dry, you can pick these things up, throw them around, and uh, you don't have to worry about them falling apart. Here I was just uh, testing out the uh, setup of it. And as I said, though, I just used one gate in the end. Uh, but they're very sturdy uh, pieces, and I was pleasantly surprised. Once they're dry, it's time to paint them. I'm using this gray color called Elephant Gray. Uh, wood, typically when it ages, isn't brown. It uh, tends to weather to a grayish color. So that's what I'm going through, going with here. I'm just going to put on, not a dry brush, but a, a light coat. And that way some of the wood uh, will show through underneath. And so it won't be just solid gray. There'll be some wood tones uh, coming through. And I think it came out okay. I also made sure to do the top edge of the fencing, underneath the fencing, in between the fencing, the posts, just to make sure I got all the edges uh, got painted as well and not just the front and back. Once the paint dried, I laid them out on the uh, layout and decided I needed to have a path that was uh, worn through the grass. So I took out a file, a flat file, and I just started meandering through the field, heading back towards that corner where the uh, uh, fence is broken, the stone fence, and didn't want to damage my uh, split rail fence that I just made, move them out of the way, and now that I knew where uh, they were starting. So it was just a matter of scraping up uh, the grass that I had put down and uh, clearing the way as I said, all the way back to that corner, and it was just a nice uh, curving path. Once I cleared the path, then it was just a matter of vacuuming up all the debris, and that left it right down to the paint. Here I'm applying some rubbing alcohol, some IPA, and on top of that, I came in with some PVA glue that I then ran along just as we do normally, just to have it uh, soak in, break the tension. And then I came in with some leaf scatter. These are chopped up leaves from my backyard and they're ground down very fine. And I just uh, put them down along the path. It was actually the only golden colored thing I had. <laughs> I didn't have 
uh, a light colored uh, sand or anything like that. Uh, so I used the leaf scatter. Once that was done, it was time to install the fence. And what I did was just put a drop of PVA glue on the uh, posts, bottom of the posts, and trying to figure out how I was going to get it to stand up. And what I ended up doing was grabbing uh, one of the spare buildings that I had. That's my firehouse, my uh, card mock-up of my firehouse that I'm building. And so I <laughs> stuck the building right there and then uh, put the uh, fence up. <laughs> what I discovered was I actually didn't even need the uh, uh, building there. <laughs> Once the uh, glue got tacky enough, it uh, stood up on its own. I did the same for the other side. And then what I did was I came back and added another drop of uh, PVA glue at the base just to make sure that the fence would hold up. With the fence installed, it was then time to put the gate in. And I first was going to do it on this side. But then I decided I didn't like the fact that the gate actually was blocking the fence. Here I'm trying to adjust to, because someone would then have to kind of walk around the gate to get to the path. And that just didn't seem right to me. So what I did was I just took it and I uh, turned it around and I uh, faced it in the other direction. And I like that a lot better. I think it looks more natural that way. And after installing the cobblestone driveway for my little row of stores there, I think the scene looks complete. Okay, thanks for watching.